Hello, third graders. Um, today we're going to start a project called Symmetrical Skulls, inspired by the Day of the Dead. Um, so here is my example of my skull. In fact, I have a lot more examples I want to show you. Every quarter I do this with students, I kind of start multiple new examples. Um, so here's another example. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with the word symmetry, symmetry is whenever an image is the same on both halves. So if you imagine a line down the center, the things happening on the two halves are the same. It's easy to remember that symmetry means same um, because of that double S sound. Symmetry, same. Symmetry, same. Um, so if you can just remember that, then you'll, uh, you'll be good for this project. I'm going to show you an easy way to create symmetry. This one is not completely done yet. You can see I started a pencil transfer up here. Um, this one, I'm going to show you just some cool objects that I put in there because obviously this is kind of Halloween inspired too. Um, sorry, I get off subject, but I'm going to show you how to do a pencil transfer, which is basically like you press really hard with a pencil and then you stamp that graphite on the other half. Um, and then in doing so, once you stamp it, like this one is done with the pencil transfer. Now I would go in with my pencil and trace this. Um, and then you would see all the lines really dark. Um, some of my favorite things to do in these obviously are spider webs. There's so much that you can do with spider webs in this project. Um, I'm going to do an example one for you. It'll probably have a spider web in there. Uh, the general idea, let me flip this over and I'll show you spider web really quick. Um, so with a spider web, you just have to have lines that radiate out from a point, almost like, you know, petals on a flower. They can be straight lines. They can be slightly wavy like these ones. And then the next step, by the way, they can go all the way around or they could just be like, you know, two or three lines. They don't need to radiate all the way around that dot. Then you're going to do lines that dip inward towards that dot. See how these lines kind of bow inward? They almost look like they're getting sucked in by like a gravity force towards that dot there. You could also, I suppose, make these lines straight, but I like to make them curvy. It kind of gives the spider web a little bit more organic kind of feel. Um, and you could go as long as you want with this. The lines could be as close or as far as you want. Um, there's a lot of variation then from here in making that spider web. Um, so yes, yeah, spider webs are some of my favorite things to use. Actual spiders look pretty cool in here. This one has a frog in the nose, um, a bat in the eye. Lightning and drips and drops are fun. I do a lot of drips. Um, you can see like this one here. This one has a lot of drips going on. Um, and colorful drips are fun too because then it looks like maybe it's like dripping paint or oil. Or um, I like to do foliage, like leaf designs. Um, clouds and lightning are fun for Halloween. Uh, a lot of times also I put in words. Like this one has the word spooky. On the opposite side, when you transfer it, it will be backwards. Just so you know, if you do a word, it will end up backwards. I'm okay with backwards words. Um, this one has bats, spiders, spider webs, pumpkins. Um, you could just do basic swirly designs, stripes, checkerboards, things like that. Um, this one has kind of a chevron pattern, which is like a checkerboard, except the lines are on diagonal instead of being like perfectly vertical and horizontal. Um, you could do like monsters. Uh, here's a checkerboard pattern. Polka dots are fun. Um, these little like loopy swirly designs around the edges. A lot of Day of the Dead skulls have kind of a lace look around the edges where there's kind of a lace border. Um, honestly, you could even look up Day of the Dead Skulls, and you could probably find tons of patterns you could use. I love to use the word spooky for some reason, like the curvy S's and the Y's are just fun to write. Um, this one has a pencil going through, like, behind the cheekbone back up here. So sometimes I'll do, like, paint splatters or art supplies mixed in there, too. Feel free to mix in things that you're interested in, like... Uh, any hobbies or interests that you have, feel free to put in some images like that. Anything you can draw can work for this design, okay? In a minute, I'm going to show you actually how to do the pencil transfer. I just want to talk more about the design aspect and images you can use. Anything you can draw works for me, okay? Um, let's see, this one has the word magic. And some of them you can see the designs aren't quite fully transferred yet, but I feel like that's helpful to even just see. This one's got a snake and a wolf in there. Um, yeah, so, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Blake skeleton. I will send you guys a blank skeleton like this that you can use. If you can just find one off the internet, the only thing you have to make sure of is that it is actually symmetrical. I think this one I drew out um, making sure that it was perfectly symmetrical because some of the ones I found on the internet when I folded in half were not perfectly symmetrical, so the designs didn't add up, okay? Um, so I will send you this exact one. If you can print this one out, it's sure to be symmetrical. Or if you can find another one that works, that's fine too. Uh, so I'm going to fold my paper in half. Actually, when I'm doing that, you can see that I'm sort of making sure that these lines line up on the side of the skeleton. 
if the if the head of the skeleton and the cheekbone and that doesn't line up, uh, then your design may also not line up when you fold it in half, okay? Okay, so after it's folded in half, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do all my intricate pencil designs on one half of the skeleton skull. Um, and honestly, I don't really think too much about it. I just kind of start drawing. I would say that this is not one that you need to necessarily do like a practice sketch for. It's more or less like a really detailed doodle. Um, and then, you know, kind of from that doodle, interesting things just come out of it, kind of on accident. But it makes it really fun and cool. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. I'm going to do, I really like that lace design I had on the end of that one, but I'm going to make it more intricate. Sorry, guys, we'll have bells going off during these a lot of times. The bells don't ever go off in this building, so it just kind of remains. Um, I also love to do polka dots. I feel like dots, big or small, they just kind of make an interesting pattern. Okay, I'm gonna do a bunch more dots in here, I think. Um, maybe almost like bubbles coming out of the eye. I'm not gonna leave you guys on while I do this whole design. Let me go ahead and do the design and then I'll show you how to do the pencil transfer. I'll tune back in with you, okay? Hey guys, I'm gonna come back for a sec because I wanna talk to you about overlap. Anytime you want something to overlap something else, like maybe I want these spikes to be behind these drips or maybe vice versa, maybe I want the spikes to be in front of the drips. Regardless, all you do when you want something to overlap is you draw that image right over the other. So I'm drawing those spikes right over the drips. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase inside the spikes if I want the spikes to be in front. Hmm, I can't really decide which one I want to be in front. I think I'm gonna have the drips be in front now. I don't really like that. Uh, so anyhow, so I just drew the spikes right over the drips and then I'm gonna erase inside the drip. After you erase, you'll probably have to go in and do some cleanup. Here we go, yeah. Um, so anytime you want something to overlap, yeah, just make sure and draw it right over. Don't try to like draw a spike and then stop and then start, because it just doesn't look like a convincing shape. It looks like it's kind of broken. If you draw right over, it will look like a convincing shape going behind the others. Okay. One other thing I wanted to tell you guys about is that it's really cool in these designs to have something that repeats. Um, so my repeating thing is gonna be stars. Um, I've decided to just draw kind of like stars in different areas. Just talking about that bell and there it is again. Um, anyhow, so it's cool to like, if you wanna do things of different sizes, like big, small, um, and also to have parts of your pattern, like anything that you like going on in there repeating, okay? Remember, you can, you can really draw anything that you want to in there. Um, once you get done drawing your one side, like drawing in all your details, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna trace over all these lines really dark. When you're tracing over them all really dark, Please take your time. You don't want to be going in, giving everything a double line and making it look messy. Keep it neat because if it looks messy now, it's going to look messy when you transfer. It's not going to get better, okay? In fact, it's probably going to get worse. All right, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to outline over all these really dark, and then I will show you how to start the pencil. Okay, hey kids, my lines are nice and dark. I added in some extra dot patterns, so if you want to add in some extra, now's the time to do it. After your design is dark, you're going to fold the skull back in half. Now, it doesn't matter if I rub on this side of the paper or this side of the paper. The transfer will work either way. You just need any hard plastic object, okay? We are going to use the corner of that object, so we're not going to rub on the back of the paper like this. And you can you could do like this all day and nothing's going to happen. You need to actually use the corner and put some force. Use some of that muscle power, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to just transfer part of it. So I'm just, you know, kind of rubbing on the top part of the skull. I'm not even going all the way to the edge. So what you'll see is only that area has transferred, okay? If there's an area that you can't see well enough to trace it, you need to fold it back over and you need to rub that area more, okay? No matter what kind of paper, pencil, or hard plastic object you use, this transfer will work. It just takes a lot of patience, okay? So, you know, don't take the time to email me and be like, it's not working, okay? It's you that's not working. It will work, trust me. I had a lot of kids when I did this in the past years in class, you know, kind of get frustrated with it and not have the patience and be like, oh, it's just not working, you know? It will work, I promise, okay? Once you can see it well enough to trace it, 
then you can open up and you can start tracing. Remember, if there's an area you can't see well enough, like I can't see this lace pattern over here, just fold it and rub that area. You don't need to rub over the whole skeleton skull. Just get that area a little bit more. It'll save you guys some time, okay? And this is gonna take a lot of time and patience, especially if you're like me and you like to do a lot of detail, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again. I'm gonna finish this transfer and I'll show you what it'll look like. And then I will talk to you about color. Okay, now I have the transfer completed. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tracing and Sharpie before I start color. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself, got excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this thing in Sharpie and then I will talk to you guys about adding color, okay? You know what, scratch that. I'm not really gonna trace this in Sharpie. I think you guys know how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Make sure you have something underneath you if you're using permanent ink. This stuff likes to, I mean, you don't have to use Sharpie. Any permanent marker will work that's black. Um, but it soaks through the paper and it'll get on other surfaces. Your family probably doesn't want that at home, okay? Um, so make sure when you're tracing with Sharpie and such that you have something underneath you. Uh, when you start coloring, I highly suggest that you limit your colors. Um, you're probably like, why on earth would the art teacher tell me to limit my colors? Well, when you use a ton of different colors, let me show you this example here, this colorful one. I feel like this one is kind of gaudy. There's so many different colors going on. We have like a purple orange pattern, a green orange, a maroon and green. And this, they're like different shades of green. We have blue and light blue, orange and black. Then we have like these random pastel colors. We have the full spectrum of rainbow under here. This is a totally different color pattern. Um, I don't care if you use crayons, color pencils, markers, Sharpies, whatever you want to do to color it, however you want to color it. I highly suggest when you color it, though, you stick with your symmetry. If this is maroon and green, it should be maroon and green on this side, okay? Um, but as far as, like, what colors you use, the colors are up to you. I just, I think it's cooler, like this one, if you use four or five colors as opposed to using every color you can, okay? I think it actually looks better, um, the piece looks more unified, like these colors were purposeful and well thought out, um, not just like a random hodgepodge of colors and chaos, okay? Um, so I would recommend after you trace in Sharpie using four or five different colors, and uh, good luck, guys.